like these videos so it'll show you these in the future and of course to subscribe and hit your notifications so you get updated anytime I post a new video of a halftime of a live show or we go live like this. So let's get into this painting where we'll be painting these two goats. Let's get into it. Welcome once again. My name is David Garibaldi. This is Paint Life Live. I do these live streams where I create these paintings for you uh, live here with you. I'll also be sharing about my techniques and some stories along the way. If you have questions, ask them below in the chat. If I don't get to it today, we'll answer it in a future live stream. And again, the best way to watch these is to watch it on YouTube. And if you haven't already subscribed and uh, like this as well. All right, let's get into it. So I mentioned this painting is of two goats and the debate between these two goats, who is the goat? And uh, you know, maybe you can help me decide that today, but either way, we're just going to paint them, have some fun with this. Now painting pop portraits all the time, I'm always trying to stay in the loop of just what's going on in pop culture, you know, what songs are popular on the charts. Now, luckily, I'm also into that. I'm into finding out who is, uh, you know, who's doing well on the charts or who's popular right now, because I like to just, I just enjoy new sounds, new music. There's a lot of music that I also listen to and enjoy. They just don't have distinctive portraits uh, that I think you recognize, but, those I kind of just save for myself or we just do on a random live stream one day. So either way, today is definitely, I know that this is definitely in the, in the conversation, it's trending. By the way, when I started doing these live streams, I didn't realize the challenge of trying to talk and paint at the same time makes me appreciate Bob Ross a whole lot more than I used to. Shout out to that's the that's the painting goat right there. Bob Ross. So rumor has it that Bob Ross used to paint three of his paintings for a single episode. So he'll do one to practice uh, before he records and then he does one live like this and then he did another one afterwards, I think from learning from his mistakes. But uh, I saw that in this really interesting Bob Ross documentary that's on Netflix. I'll be honest, it's kind of sad. This person that we know that, you know, we, we love him for his positivity, his peacefulness, uh, really struggled with his growing fame and what comes with that. So it's very interesting. I highly recommend watching that if you can. You know, fame is something that you cannot prepare for. You know, one, you've got to, you're going through it, but then also what people don't realize is the people around you are also experiencing it as well. And something that I'm nowhere near the, the fame of Bob Ross, but just from what very little I've experienced, it's just nothing you can ever prepare for. Some do it much better than others. I, I commend them for that. So I started doing these live streams in 2020. Naturally, just because we weren't able to do live shows, but I still wanted to create, I still wanted to contribute to just society in a positive way. So I started doing these live streams, and when I started, I would just use, you know, iPhones on a gimbal. And we would just be in the studio trying to share 
what we could. And I really developed this passion, this love for presenting art on these live streams. And over time, it's evolved to where we're at today. Now, I'm sharing this because I've been able to experience the value in live streaming. And so those of you who are artists out there thinking about doing this or maybe hesitant, I'm a little biased, but I would highly recommend live streaming. And this is why. You get real-time feedback on art that you're already going to be creating. So, and here's the thing, you don't even have to talk like this. You could just turn on the camera, paint. You can make it as engaging or not engaging as you want, but I think getting that real-time feedback, I think connecting with people in that real-time, there's nothing like it. And uh, it's just, you know, also a special thing. You can really build a, a great relationship with your collectors and new collectors along the way. I, I just personally enjoy it. I've always enjoyed it. I'm, I'm glad that we took that chance, you know, in 2020, to do these live streams and then seeing where it's evolved along the way. So the paint I'm using today, it's uh, Bare Ultra Premium Paint. It's just house paint, uh, same latex house paint that you use to paint your walls at home. I just use it to create art with it. But I love this paint because I can dial in the color and have it pre-mixed. So instead of spending the time to mix it on, on the palette, which is fine for any other artist, but for me, speed is part of how I create live. So having the colors pre-mixed and consistent each and every single time is a huge plus in this painting style. Now, this paint is not it's, I mean, it's very fluid and it's hard to predict sometimes what it's going to do. But uh, for the most part, the one thing I love about it most is that it, uh, that uh, it's opaque. So I don't have to put on a lot of layers. There's already like a primer inside of it. All right, let's keep this going. We're going to step this up in the color. Now, I was sharing about the paint and how it helps me paint fast. And speed is a part of what I do as a performance painter. But I can't stand the term speed painter. I can't stand it. That's like, for example, thinking that the person who could paint the fastest is the best painter, which is not true. I mean, if the goal to get through life is to, to be the fastest, we wouldn't live to see life at all. We would get to the end and then we're done. The, the reason why I, I also don't like the term speed painter is that there's so much more to painting on stage than speed. Performance painting is a term that I love and I think it's more fitting because when you're on stage in front of people, whether you're painting or speaking, it's an experience for your audience. So those of you who are getting into speed painting, think about what is the value of the experience I can give my audience? Not just painting fast, the music, the movement, the presentation, and just shift more towards performance painting rather than you know, a, uh, a limited scope of just speed painting.
going to switch up these brushes. Since I'm getting a little bit more fine-tuned in the colors, I talked about these brushes in the last episode, but I love these cheap synthetic brushes. One, not only do they do the job really well, but the price, you know, I, I go through so many brushes and I even clean them and we still go through quite a bit, but I just, I love that you can create still a quality, high quality of work with brushes that, you know, may not be as expensive. Just taking my time with this, enjoying the process. I mean, isn't that truly what this should be about? Again, not the speed, not trying to get it done first. Now keep this in mind, there are times where I have to do paintings in a minute and a half on live TV, three minutes. So even on the live show at a uh, halftime for the NBA, they give you a six minute max time. So everything has to be done in time. So don't get me wrong, speed is a huge factor, but not the only one. In that minute and a half or three minutes, the painting still has to be, has to have a good quality. It still has to look good. It has supposed to be an entertaining uh, process to the audience as well. You want to keep them engaged the whole time. I always try to compare this to uh, Guitar Hero, the video game. Um, in, in the game, when you're not performing well, your audience starts to boo you in the game. And I think it's relevant, not that your audience is going to boo you at painting, but you have to remember that there's an audience there. Uh, if you don't care about the audience, then just paint alone at home. Do a live stream. Who cares? But if you are performing in front of a live audience, I would definitely consider them as a huge part of the experience. So right now I'm just sort of creating the base. We're gonna kind of melt these together at some point, but right now I'm just building this up one color at a time from cool to warm. Now there's a lot of details that we're going to share later on to give you a close-up look uh, because beyond just the structure of the painting, there's a lot of details that build these paintings up that you can only see up close. So with this uh, painting technique I'm doing right now is I am filling in certain spaces, but I'm not just laying my brush flat. There's a lot of different rotation happening so that I can really take control of this brush and get different line work, but it's, it's not just filling it in and moving, it's the movement of my wrist, the rotation of it. All those, all those factors add up later on. It's gonna, it's gonna show in the final painting. Thank you. 
brush off some of the excess because I want to keep using these brushes, but let's, you know, let's wash it off. You know, sometimes I don't mind if the paints mix in color, but when it starts just completely changing it, it's definitely time to wash them off. All right, keep building this up. Well, you know, when I'm uh, putting the brush on the surface and then rotating my, my wrist as I go, I'm also thinking about the contour of the surface of the face. So, it, yes, I'm painting, but I'm really thinking about carving into something. I know it's a flat surface, but I'm giving the illusion that there's volume there with color, with light, with shadow. So, as I move my hand with the brush on the surface, rotating my wrist, will help give the illusion in the lines that there's a face here, that there's curvature to that area of the face. Kind of make out who the portrait is. Obviously, if you're watching this later, you could skip forward, but where's the fun in that? All these little bits of color that, when just alone, may not make sense, but added up the combination of what will be shown later. All the information is speaking. Right. Let's, uh, let's watch, actually, let's ditch those. Let's go with a slightly smaller brush, a little bit more tighter so we can get those details. Make sure you can see it coming to life. We're gonna go right into this yellow. We started with the purple, the blue, the cool colors. Now we're making our way to our light source with the warm and eventually the white, the highlights. I'm holding far back on my brush so I get those looser lines. It won't feel or look as constricted. Thinking about that as I move my brush on the surface and reload. Now, when I'm doing these live streams in studio, I'm moving slower than I would move on stage for a live show, but I'm building up that muscle memory, of how I would move around. So artists who are getting into performance painting, spend that time to really practice, like move around, like feel what it's like to be, to have the time running out and you've got to meet that deadline in, in minutes. One thing that I, I want to do when I'm getting near the end of this is to also sort of let some of the paint dry uh, so that when I add the final highlights, it won't mix in too much. But we want to make sure we have that separation of color so that we're creating that illusion. So highlights, holding far back on that brush, doing a controlled scribble. Along the surface is dragging the brush, applying pressure, and then taking it off and going back and forth between those two techniques. All right, let's switch it up now. Let's go to the highlights. We're gonna ditch those brushes. We're gonna go even smaller. So the next actually have some smaller brushes over here. We're gonna go one step down, get tighter, the highlights. Put the right brush. Let's 
By the way, thank you again for watching this live stream. I've been doing uh, Paint Life Live. I believe we're on like, over 100 episodes now. And so thank you for watching. If you're enjoying these live streams and if you're wondering how do I support these, uh, it's free. All you do is hit the subscribe button or just hit the like button. And if you're feeling it, if you're really enjoying it, you can share it. It goes a long ways to help out this channel grow and we can reach more people with more art. So thank you for watching though, either way. Oh, one last question. Actually, not, not the last question, but another question is, what techniques or uh, anything on your art journey that you would want to learn? Let me know below in the comments so I can share any knowledge that I may have or any way that I can help you on your journey. So let me know below what are questions about the art process, about building an art career or our brands. Let me know because I, I really do want this place to be a resource for artists to come to, to not only learn the techniques of creating, but also the techniques of building and marketing your art to the world. All right, let's dive in. So see how these highlights come out. Looks like it's actually doing pretty well. You never know until you put the brush on the canvas. But man, those highlights just like really bring it to life. A lot more to add, but let's just add these initial ones right now. Go back to the light. Let's get that highlight of the top of the head. Okay, we're gonna add all like the, the fun details. That's why I don't want you to skip ahead because there is a process to this, be patient. Painting will come to life. You just have to be patient with the process. These highlights. I'm trying to not be too perfect with the brush strokes. I want to leave some, some mistakes. I don't want it to be perfect. I feel like that's, that's going to be the difference in the future between AI art and human art. If you want people to still appreciate art made by humans, make art that feels like that. The perfection of machine, we now know a machine can make that. It can predict how to create those lines, but how well can it predict the mistakes of a human? Sure, one day it will, but until then, take advantage of that. Give people, give the world something real. Let's get these highlights on the dreads. Just go all the way down. two goats appearing on the canvas. All right, let's ditch these brushes. We're gonna get some small brushes, start building in the eyes. Now, when we do the eyes, we're not gonna go straight into the white of the eyes. We're gonna start with the shadow because there's folds over the eyes that are casting shadows. We want it to feel like that. So let's go with the dark gray and let's add that in first. Very light, same thing over here. Always brighten it just step by step. But considering, just considering that, that shadow that's casted over the white of the eye. So I'm not gonna take the white all the way up. I'm gonna keep that top part in the shadow. about the catch on the eyes like that. Same thing over here. All right, let's go back. There is a section I want to fill in with some more highlights. There we go. Some little details. All right, let's 
stitch that into the water. Nope. <laughs> So now we have a, a structure here. So I think it's time to just, let's just bring some more life to it. We're gonna use the brushes. I'll start pulling the color up. Just right through. This is like alive, it's kind of melting up. Now, if you have your structure down in your painting, any lines you put above it won't take away from that because you've already established to the viewer the subject that is here. So don't be afraid to take those risks. I'm doing them right now. This is paint. If I make a mistake, I can paint over it. Let's go to the green. Oh, I have another question for you. If, if, you're, uh, if you're watching this and you're wondering, you know, how can you paint like this? Uh, what if you were able to set up an area in your garage, in your house, your apartment to do some of these paintings? Let me know down below because I can try to, you know, if there's enough people that want this, I can provide the resources in the description below and we can share the, the, the structure of the painting so you can work with that, the colors that I'm using. Uh, let me know down below if this is a resource that you would want to see and I can share sort of step-by-step uh, process to what I'm doing on these, on these live streams. Let's go to some wider brushes. later. All right, let's brush these off a bit. Actually, you know what? Let's ditch the brush. Let's dip our hands in. All 
right? So now, now that we've got our structure, we've got our color, we can see our subjects, I just want to add some lines around the rim of it so that it starts to stand out from the background. In photography, this is what we call a hairline light. We're going to do the same on this painting. Now, as you're painting, I shared about this recently, that one of the most underrated skills as an artist is to become more observant. To be observant of not only how things appear in the world, but also how you feel in this world. And our job is to just translate that onto canvas. And the challenge as an artist over a lifetime is to get better at this. To put something out and say, okay, this didn't really quite convey what I wanted to, to put out there, but the more and more you do it, the more you learn how to do it better. All right, let's stitch this. I wanna get some brushes that are really giving you those fine lines. Let's check over here. See if there's some more fine-tuned brushes. All right. Get to this white. Now, specifically, I wanted to put some lines around the, the dreads, his hair. It's so many unique lines in here. got most of it done now I think this is this is the fun part this is where we get to throw some paint around let's start with our cool colors the blue the purple step it up in color Get some pink, just that transition between. All right, let's keep this going. Add some yellow, water down the yellow just a little bit. And then of course, the last color that I like to throw on it, even though the canvas is black, I like to throw the black paint because it starts to cut into the image, creates some contrast. I'll show you these details in just a little bit as I'm finishing up this painting of the debate, the two goats. Is it J. Cole or Drake? Now I'll throw this out there. If someone out there wants to collect this painting, you let me know what lyric from first person shooter you want in the center and I'll create that for you. So that is for the person who wants to collect this painting of J. Cole and Drake, you let me know. All right, let's finish this off right now. As always with a handprint, let's, uh, let's go with this pink. I don't know why I'm just feeling this. I guess the color. Let's get this last. All right. Take one last look at J. Cole Drake. One of my favorite songs out right now, First Person Shooter. Take one last look and then we'll chat before we sign off. Take a look. Just zoom on in, show them the details. Man, this was a fun one. This was fun. Let me know your thoughts in the chat. 
And of course, if you see this later on on social, you gotta just drop a comment, drop a like. Let me know if you saw this live. Take a close look. And thank you again to everyone who is watching this live stream. And also thank you to everyone who is keeping up with all the live streams over time. Take that one last look. All right, let's chat. All right, let's chat. All right, thank you again to everyone who uh, watched this live stream. Uh, if you enjoyed it or if you want to see future ones and get notified, be sure to like and subscribe so you always get updated. Uh, and again, J. Cole, Drake, thank you for the inspiration. Who's the GOAT? Let me know. You can let me know down below in the comments. But again, my name is David Garibaldi. This is Paint Life Live. Also keep a lookout for uh, the relaunch of Peyton Prosper. It's a 30 day course for artists to relaunch your brand and to build a brand that will last a very, very long time. My name is David Garibaldi. Take one last look. Peace.